The last humans on the moon left there on December 19th of 1972. Half a century has passed, and now the dream of going back to the moon is not so far away. But first, the most anticipated thing right now is an orbital flight. It requires a new launch system and much preparation. Among them, we have SpaceX's Starship, Blue Origin's New Glenn, and Artemis's Space Launch System. Hi! How was your day? Prepare your favorite hot drink because today's video will be extremely attractive. The heat of space discovery and new technology has always spread around the world. But which one will reach orbit first? I believe the victory will go to SpaceX. Why? Well, I have some reasons for you. First, let's go with the Artemis mission. Although many efforts have been made to implement it, the story lies in the rocket itself. Developed since 2011, the SLS has been many years behind schedule, and delay is a word associated with the name. Maybe we should name it delay instead of SLS. I can't remember exactly how many delays it has been, and I don't want to sit down and count it all. But most recently, agency officials said on February 24th that an April launch is no longer possible for Artemis 1, and May could be difficult to hit as well. We continue to evaluate the May window, but we're also recognizing that there's a lot of work in front of us. Tom Whitmire, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development at NASA Headquarters in Washington, said during a virtual news conference. Some of that work will involve analyzing data from the Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal, which is scheduled for March 17th. The May launch window runs from the 7th through the 21st, Whitmire said. If Artemis 1 isn't ready to go by then, the next opportunity comes from June 6th through June 16th, and the next window after that runs from June 29th through July 12th. Now, the agency is refraining from setting a launch date at all. The NASA officials said they want to wait until the wet dress test is completed before feeling confident about any publicly announced launch date. Which is understandable, as the wet dress rehearsal is a cumbersome process designed to identify any flaws in the rocket or its ground systems prior to launch. In reality, NASA has held to virtually no published schedule since the SLS program began 11 years ago, with an initial launch target of 2016. So there is no reason to expect that situation to change. To date, NASA has spent more than $22 billion developing SLS and the cost per launch is $4.1 billion. $22 billion and $4.1 billion? You definitely didn't hear that wrong. This cost for SLS is staggering in comparison to another monstrosity of a rocket in development, the SpaceX Starship. With that money, Elon Musk can produce a ton of Starships. Musk recently estimated that Starship's development cost would be 5-10% to of the Apollo-era Saturn V rocket, which, adjusted for inflation, costs $50 billion, puts Starship's development cost at $2.5 to $5 billion. Beyond a development cost at a fraction of SLS, SpaceX also expects the cost per launch will be far less expensive with Musk saying last month that he is highly confident it would be less than $10 million. Well, now let's see the progress of Blue Origin's new Glenn. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos, Orbit, I don't know. I don't think it will happen. And here's why. The same story as SLS, known as a competitor to Starship and developed since 2012, but so far, Blue Origin just successfully tested the first new Glenn fairing prototype at the beginning of February after a decade. However, it's just the simplest kind of test. There are dozens of jobs left behind. Perhaps it's SLS's best friend and they will continue to accompany each other for a long time. Let's put them together with the Boeing Starliner. This is exactly called a disaster trio. Originally aiming for the first launch in 2020, by 2018, Blue Origin is expected to launch New Glenn in 2021. Then, in February 2021, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin planned to launch its reusable New Glenn rocket from Florida for the first time late this year. But that depends on how the company hits its development milestones along the way. 
And that's not the only hurdle ahead. Scott Henderson, Blue Origin's Florida site director, recently told Spectrum News 13 that his team was aiming for an integrated test and wet dress rehearsal in the third quarter of the year. The big things that we have remaining are to complete the first flight article's payload fairings, which will house the satellites that we're launching, he said. And while the launch pad is done, now we have to marry up the booster with the launch pad and to check out all the propellant, high pressure gas, hydraulic systems, and all the command and control systems that are necessary to launch. So it can be seen that there is still too much work to do with New Glenn and SLS. They are facing increasing competition from you know who. Musk and SpaceX. Starship and Super Heavy are poised to make a big leap. Unlike SLS and New Glenn, SpaceX has had countless successful launches and tests with Starship since 2019. This company has completely changed the aerospace industry and is exactly a humiliation of its two opponents. While SLS and New Glenn still won't know when they will be ready to fly, what we expect from the world's tallest 120 meter space vehicle is not so far away. I feel at this point highly confident that we'll get to orbit this year, Musk said Thursday night on February 10th during a live streamed Starship update from Starbase, SpaceX's facility in South Texas near the Gulf Coast hamlet of Boca Chica Village. He spoke in front of the fully stacked Starship that will perform the program's first orbital test flight, a duo known as Booster 4 and Ship 20. SpaceX is awaiting approval from the Federal Aviation Administration before proceeding with Starship's next phase. Unfortunately, the FAA delayed another month until the end of March. But anyway, SpaceX has everything ready with completing a bunch of tests of the Starship S-20 vehicle and its Super Heavy Booster 4. Some suggested that the pair wouldn't be used for orbital flight, and we've got a video analyzing that as well. However, even if that were the case, Elon Musk still has even better options with the Starship S-24 and Booster 7 using the 33 powerful Raptor 2 engines instead of 29 Raptor 1 used for B-4. So the FAA will only be the last hurdle. If one day SLS or New Glenn gets to the moon, they will be welcomed by Starship. And for all of these reasons, we put our trust in Elon Musk's SpaceX. What about you? And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas about today's episode in the comment section. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thank you for loving us. Please subscribe. See ya!